Hey, buddies, Potato McWhiskey here, and welcome to Aussie Mandius. This is a bite sized 4x game that can be played in about an hour or two, depending on how quickly you play and make decisions. This video is sponsored by the developer of this game. There will be a link in the description of the video if you want to check it out. Really great for me because I was planning on doing a video on this game in any way, but you know, getting the sponsorship just kind of pushed me to do it regardless. I've actually played this game with the Yogg's Cast in multiplayer. Fantastic small multiplayer game uh, something you can get through in about an hour or two with friends really great super recommend the game and we're going to go ahead and play on the world map right now because i think this is the map that people will find the most interesting i will do my best to explain the game mechanics who do i want to play as i play as china i could play as the incan empire i could play as the egyptians i could play as the mycenaeans i kind of like the idea of maybe being america let's have a look so these guys are militant they are imperialist you are industrious the mycenaeans are expansion the Egyptians are easy. Maybe I'll play an easy sieve just to be able to show off the game and give you guys an idea. Let me see. The Inca are medium difficulty. The Aztecs are medium. Obviously, the Mycenaeans are hard. These guys are medium. The Jo are medium. Let's do the Egypt, right? Egypt is the easy sieve. We're going to go ahead and play Egypt. So we are the Egyptians. Uh, what difficulty do I want to play on? So gr Scholar is no bonuses. Let let's do Scholar. No bonuses for the AI. We'll just do a basic game. And we are the industrious Ip Egyptian. So I could explain what all of these bonuses mean, but first I got to explain what the hell you do in a game of Ozymandias. Well, you have four resources. You have science, which is used to upgrade your yields. You have money, which is used to exchange money for some other yield. For example, money can be turned into food. Money can also be turned into science. Money can also be turned into military power. Food is your resource that you use to expand both horizontally and vertically your empire. So it is used for both directions. That uh, is quite important for you to know. You can expand in both directions. Military power is the power of your armies. Armies are recruited with money and your army's combat strength is based on this number. This number can be increased from a variety of ways. For example, if you invest enough money into your military power, you can make this number bigger, making your armies stronger. Uh, your military power can be upgraded in a bunch of other ways, but we'll talk more about the military when we actually get to it. What are the first things we're going to do here in the game? Well, we have a few options. The first thing we should do is we should take a look at our technology and we should take a look at our empire. So if we take a look at our empire, we own three desert tiles, a single plains tile and two river tiles. Every river tile gives us two food. You can see here the food technology tab has been clicked through on these rivers, which is yielding us two food. We're also yielding an extra food from the plains tile. So in total, we're generating four food. Uh, sorry, four food from rivers, one food from plains, and then the city, right? And because the city has two towers, means it has two population, is eating two food per population. But then per population, it's generating one money and two science per population, right? So starting to see how like your economy can be built and stuff like that, right? So expanding to tiles is your primary way to increase your yields. Desert tiles are pretty low quality. They're only worth one money per turn uh, without any technological investment. And they're quite expensive to invest in. I think our best move here for our early game is to either invest into science from planes because we can use our food here to grab more planes tiles or yeah i think i think honestly i think planes are the best move for us planes produce one science and one food so if we invest our science into flag technologies we will take the price of these tiles that we can buy with food, right? We take our food here and I could buy this plain tile for four food, right? Boom, I buy that tile, I buy that tile, I buy that tile. I spent all my money or all my food and I've got five food left, right? But if I cancel my turn and I come back here and instead I buy this flag tech, boom, and this flag tech, boom, um, and maybe this flag tech, boom. Now, by buying all three of these flag techs, I have made plain tiles three food cheaper to to, to grab. So now this is worth one. This is worth two. This is worth three. And I can save 14 food for next turn. However, uh, my yields will be low. So maybe I want to start transmitting over into science, right? I, I take my money, my 30, my 30 cash that I've got in the bank, and I transmit that over to science so that I can research more science from planes because I'm going to get three more planes tiles next turn. And then I save my food to maybe buy a tile that's actually worth something. Maybe I'll buy this mountain because it's a nice border. Or maybe I'll hold on to my food. Because yes, 
I will lose four food from waste because I lose 35% of my food every turn. I'm sorry, 30% of my food that is left over in my coffers. But like, do I really want to buy this forest tile? I don't think so. I don't think I do. So I'm going to hold on to my food. I'll lose four. Maybe I'll buy the mountain. Mountain tiles are worth one science and one money. So I'm going to buy the mountain. And then I'll end my turn. All the flags get purchased. Boop, boop, boop. Everyone fixes their flags. And now we get to select an opportunity. We can get rock climbers, which allows us to claim a mountain for free. We could build a city on planes, which will get us a yield tech. I like the idea of the yield tech um, because I can build a city on this planes right here for 20 food. What would it take for me to have 20 food next turn? Probably a little bit too much. But what I could do instead is get another four signs per turn. Eh? All right. And then I take my food and I buy these two planes tiles. And then next turn, I'll get another uh, four signs per turn, right? And you can kind of start, start to see how it's all starting to shake out. Um, I definitely want a little bit more tech next turn. I could also, technically, I could save my money to invest into food. I think buying flag techs are, is maybe my way forward here. So I'm going to put all of my money into, flag t into, into technology so that I can buy, like, I would really like to buy the plus one money for planes because that would be worth six money per turn. Um, and then I can start to look into maybe buying more desert and improving my ability to claim desert and stuff like that. I'm mostly, I'm going to focus my energy on Africa and try to minimize my contact with other empires. Okay, we can get a free desert tag flag. I'm going to take the free desert flag. Um, so I'll come over here to my opportunities. I will claim a desert tile. This one right here. Then I'll claim a river. I'll have 40 signs next turn. Maybe let me, let me cancel this. Yeah, I'll take the free desert flag because I, th I think that's still worth it. I'll claim the free desert tile. Maybe I'll save my food. It's it definitely science is my way out of this issue here. I think I need to claim a forest so that I can buy forest flags. I also need to buy a plane so that I can buy planes flags. So let's buy the planes tile. So the grassland tile. I need to have 30 science in the bank next turn to buy money from planes. So I can buy one river flag this turn pretty comfortably, which will make buying rivers next turn even cheaper. And there's at least two more rivers I can buy here. Place three flags on forest will get me all flag techs. One, two, three. I mean, that wouldn't really be worth too much for me. So I think I'm going to place five flags in one turn to get flag tech. I don't think I'm going to be able to do that, so I'll take bronze axes. That's fine. Let's go ahead and take the planes bonus here. I've got six planes, so upgrading this will give me plus one money per planes, aka six money per turn, which will then get translated back into science. So I'm, I'm, I'm starting to build a feedback loop economy. Um, I've got five science left over. There's not much I can do with five science. I'll have 27 next turn. Let's buy a single forest tile so that I can buy forest flags soon. Or yeah, yeah, yeah. What I want to buy are the river flags, so not the forest flags. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, sorry. So we're still in the expansion phase. We're expanding carefully. Egypt, Egypt is great because we got like really good land situation. Place three flags on the sea and get all sea flag techs. Okay, I'll take that. So let's buy some forests. I'll buy two more forests. I'm going to come in here. I'm going to make rivers cheaper to claim. And then I'll claim this river for one. So we've definitely expanded our economy. This will become 33 science next turn. Is 33 science a good amount? I really need to get the 75 science realistically to max out my planes bonuses. But I also need to max out my uh, my grassland bonuses and my desert claiming because there's still a little bit of desert over here I claim. Desert is fairly low priority for me though. I, I would rather focus on these other tiles and terrain types. So I'm just going to go ahead and keep ending my turn here. Ooh, two food per river. I think I'm going to reject both of these. Now I'm going to reject. I'm going to take the two food per river. Replace that with gal replace galleys with that because I can come in here now and if I position myself correctly for the next turn I can buy a forest flag get all the forest flag techs for free use my science right I have 20 food so that I can build a city on planes next turn which will trigger the mill wheel getting me a yield tech which will get me the second food from planes which is six food per turn so this this is like a big turn for me ah so i can't i could just barely not afford to buy this river that's fine unless i can find another piece of food from somewhere no i can't okay so i may as well get like a tiny smidge more yields science from forest like i mean it takes 10 turns for this to pay off but i am going to be claiming three more forests so this will eventually pay off and it's a little bit more tech per turn. I can start now feeding. Because my tech line is really strong, I can start feeding my gold into food. I mean, I technically, I could. I could, yeah, yeah, actually, I could get a forest yield tech and a city next turn, which is going to be a huge advancement, right? Because I need 20 food to make a city, and I need 30 science to get the forest yield. So this is, this is actually like a perfect turn. Now, I am expecting armies to appear very soon. 
I can claim 10 signs per city or build a city in the forest to gain a yield tech. Now this building a city in the forest would be worth 75 signs and get me a second food per turn from forest. So that actually seems pretty good. So I'm going to go for the city direction, especially because now I can actually explain, now that I've explained a few of the game mechanics, um, normally when you build new cities, they become more expensive. Egypt is unique in that new cities don't get more expensive. So taking missions that require me to build cities actually kind of synergize really well with the industrious bonuses. Also growing cities is quite cheap. However, expanding is expensive and food technology is very expensive. So if I can use building cities, right, to get me food yield tax, that's actually really efficient for me. So yeah, 100%, that makes sense to me. Uh, let me think about how I position this most efficiently. I think right here is good. Um, no. I want to build a city on this tile. I want to build a city on this tile. I want to put my cities on my rivers because rivers are cheaper to grow, I believe, when they're coastal. Yeah, so rivers are the best place to build cities. So I want to build a city here um, and here. And I want to build a city on these forests in the next turn or two. The forests are a little bit more expensive. So I want to, so a city here, city here. That would block all these adjacent. That would mean this could be a city. So I'll put a plain city over there then because this is the closest I can put a plain city to this river. Okay, boom. Then that's a two pop city, which has given me a yield tech for planes. Now I have one less planes, right? But I have another two population in cities. So yes, I'm getting less from planes now because technically I've converted one of my planes tiles to a city, but my city is also yielding um, two science and a money. Uh, so this is yielding four science and two money for two food, which, you know, yeah, of course, it's not a perfect net positive, but it also got me extra food from like, it, it, it is a net positive for my entire economy, realistically. Um, let's go ahead and take the forest money tech. Boom. Next turn, we'll have 20 food in the bank as well. Um, we might even just continue to build cities or we might look into expanding. I don't know yet. Perhaps we should go all in on food. Well, all in on food doesn't change much, but I do want to have at least, let me, let me have a look. Uh, I want to buy one, two, so that's 13. Yeah, I want to buy two forests and I'd like to buy a river. So I need to have what 17 food in the bank so as long as i have 17 food in the bank next turn i could save the rest of my money for a future turn Ooh, crop rotation now this is a moment where we might be able to build a city that we hadn't been planning yet um if i trigger both irrigation and crop rotation boom and boom i could actually buy a city on the forest right here that i'd been planning boom which will allow me to finish off the yield tech for forests. So all future forests that I acquire are worth more and I have more population in general. Also, how you win the game, uh, having city population is important. You need to get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven crowns. You can get that through your city population. You can get it through wealth. You can get it through capturing cities, capturing spaces on the map, right? So we're, we're constantly working towards a victory condition as we build our economic engine. So the next thing that I'll likely be claiming scientifically, do I want three signs per turn? Is that worth it? I'm going to be covering these up with cities, so maybe it won't be worth it to improve my rivers. Maybe I'd be better off saving my science for claiming grassland and mountains. All right. So he's starting to claim around me a little bit, which I don't like. I'm not going to stop him because I'm in the process of building my units. All desert yield tech will half our move. Grow all of your cities in one turn will get me a free city. I'll take caravans for the half movement in desert. It's not great, but I, I, it'll be very difficult to do the other one because my cities are quite expensive, right? I would need to have just so much food. So flag tech, we have all the forest flag techs, probably want all the desert flag techs. Food wise, one, two, three. That's what we wanted to spend it on. And we will take one, two desert flag techs so we can grab this tile right here without interrupting things. Grab this tile as well, just to solidify our borders. Then we're going to take plain tech. And now all this money I'm going to feed into food so I can do an explosive expansion turn. Perfect. Perfect. So yellow is a little bit unopposed right now. Place three flags on hills, gain all flag techs. No, I'm going to take the free grassland flag here. I will take the final grassland flag tech to make grasslands even cheaper because I have one, two, three, four grasslands I need to claim. So that'll make them cheaper by quite a bit. I have all the forest flag techs. I've got 27 food in the bank. I could build more cities. I'm going to just expand my borders. Um, I'm going to grab a cheap coastal sea flag so I can start buying sea flag tiles and sea yields because they're relatively cheap actually. Uh, they're down here, sea flags and sea yields. So I just need to start getting up to 100 signs per turn. And I'm going to start working on mountain flags because there's three more mountains I need to claim. So if I knock off both of these flags, I get a little bit of food return. It's not much food, but again, when your food is so low, you need to stretch it quite far. I'm going to build a city right there because they are cheap cities and cities are really big net positives in your economy. 
especially scientifically. Claim three money per desert or double our food yield to reduce food waste. I'm going to claim three money per desert because that just is an immediate bonus. I'm also going to take that free grassland flag to plant there. I'm going to come in here. I will boost, make mountains cheaper. This will save me three food this turn. So I'll go mountain, mountain, mountain. And then I will start getting my sea flag tiles. And now I want to get close to 100 science if I can. I'm going to save my money for next turn so that I can transmute it into science. And then the goal would be to get science from seas and the sea flag tiles so that I can start to expand into the ocean and continue to expand my economy. I guess a technically a good move would be to go the desert route, but I feel like switching into sea economy right now would really, really save me a lot of headaches. The nice thing about these islands actually, by the way, is islands give you one of each yield. So they're pretty efficient to invest into. They pay themselves off pretty quick. They want me to double my wealth yield to reduce my wealth waste. I will take that. That's a fairly easy mission to do. Hard to double your food yield at this stage of the game, but doubling your wealth yield is very doable. So I want to have 100 science here. I would also like to start stopping the waste of my science. I'm going to buy this. This will use up 15 money, which will reduce how much is going over. Uh, but it does mean that less waste going forward. Perfect. So we're going to have 118 money next turn, sorry, 118 science, which will be used judiciously to expand. Let's grab these two last island tiles and then we'll start grabbing sea tiles as well. Boom. We have the 100 science. Perfect. The first army's on the field and they're going to start pushing each other's borders, which is great because they're not pushing my border, which makes me very happy. Claiming two food per grassland. I'm going to take that. Immediate bonus will allow me to continue to expand. Honestly, this is good enough. Um, let's take the extra science from C, boom, then we'll take the cheaper to claim C tiles, and then every cheap C tile we just grab for the purpose of, um, expanding to as many tiles as quickly as possible and increasing our science. We also want to try to block this guy if we can. So we've got a whole bunch of tiles coming. We're still investing heavily into the science end of things. Maybe we shouldn't invest this turn. We should hold our science or rather hold our money into our bank. So we did. We had a, we had a double flag. Whoever has higher strength or combat power will win. So it looks like he has plus one combat strength in C. So I need to increase my combat strength in C to be able to block him. Now we could get 15 money per turn for seven turns. This effectively um, is like an investment into our future. I'll take it because this is a reasonable to take later on. I think the delta in payout is like what? 15 times seven. Basically, you double your money, but it's very slow. I'm going to take cheaper food for flags and plus one power in the sea so that I at least match this guy's power in the sea. And I'm going to try to take the safe sea options, the cheap and safe. I'm not going to compete for this sea because I want these guys to fight over there, but I'd rather try to grab all this ocean down here to the bottom right. Now, can I get up to 100 science next turn? I can if I invest heavily. Perfect. I'll invest the rest into food. And so we should be able to buy plus one money for, per, from C. And then, well, actually, maybe I should buy plus one food from C first, because maybe that'll be better. Yeah, actually, plus one food from C actually seems better because it takes two money to turn into one food. So can I get up to, yeah, I can get up to 125 science this turn. Perfect. This is the kind of lineup we want to we want to be on. Now, the first Navy is out for yellow as well. So he's investing heavily into armies. So that means he's feeling like he can't expand safely much more. Um, and we need to make sure we don't look weak. Ooh. Migration would get me a free city. All C yield techs. Halves move cost in C. Honestly, that's that's better than desert, I think, because this is a very naval map. Uh, let's take plus one food from C. So now we go from 26 food per turn to uh, 40 food per turn. We nearly, we're getting close to doubling our food economy, especially because now we're going to start expanding into ocean, right? And all that jazz. So we're, we're hitting our stride, I think. Let's hold on to our cash. I'm going to start reducing our waste. So I haven't really explained waste. Um, money, stuff you, resources that you haven't spent, they are subject to waste. And basically you lose a percentage of the thing that you have, right? So I have 30, um, what do I have? I have 36 money in my pocket right now. And I lose 15% of that when I end the turn and then I get my income. However, I can pay money to reduce my waste, which means I will now lose only 10% of my money per turn, right? So I'm going to lose two money. And you could pay all the way up until it's like minus 3%. So you can stockpile your resources per turn. Power is the resource that depreciates the quickest. You lose 80% of the money you invest into power per turn. So it's really important to get up to here. So that's only half. Because it's like way, 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 way more efficient. Yeah. So, you know, the game's like got a few mechanics and stuff that takes a little bit getting used to. Ooh, own the most C. 
to get plus one science yield in seed. That's actually insane. I'm going to pop that over goldsmith. And then we need to get the final C yield tech. And then I need to invest heavily into food so I can start expanding my city economy. Yeah, okay. So we'll have a ton of food. We'll have a ton of money next turn. Um, none of these are really clickable. Let's expand like crazy. If I build a city here, it'll make future expansion in these areas cheaper. So I'm going to build a city right there because it... Cities also project power. If I click on the p combined power map mode, you can see here, the city has plus two from cities, but this tile is also getting plus one from cities. This tile is getting plus one from tech. So cities also project power. They allow you to control your borders, um, which is a fantastic thing. Boom, 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 that we're able to project our power through our cities. Uh, what if I went all in on science this turn? No, I should go all in on food. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because I can get the final sea yield tech and then expand heavily into the ocean. Okay, yeah. That makes sense. Yellow is now running out of tiles that he can claim, so he'll become even more aggressive. It looks like yellow boats are invading the red. Ooh. So if I reduce my knowledge waste to minus 10%, I can actually get a more favorable trade rate on money to science, which is fantastic. Right now, money, one money is worth one science. If I fulfill this mission, two money will be worth three science, which means this is actually a significantly good investment that I should work on. Um, and I need to also get all the sea yield text. There we go. Half movement cost for food. Moving armies and navies costs food. So, you know, food doesn't become useless in the late game. It's not just for claiming tiles. Claim all of the sea tiles that we can. And look at this massive expansion. Our economy is going to just go completely insane now from the ocean. Especially if I'm getting two science per ocean tile. I'll become the master of the seas. I don't even care about the land anymore, except for just to, to host my cities. Uh, yeah, I'm going to take druids. It allows me to trade science for more science. I'll just take that because that's just objectively good. And then I'm going to reduce my knowledge waste so that my knowledge will carry over to different turns more effectively. And now I can super efficiently convert money to knowledge, which will allow me to start vert making my economy more vertical because now I can start planting cities and then use all the science and all the money and all the food that's coming from the ocean tiles to feed my cities. Uh, because upgrading cities scales really nicely, especially when you're playing an industrious civilization where you can build and upgrade your cities really cheaply. Um, we need these uh, these techs here. Because if I, if, if I spend 150 science, I will get 10 science per turn, which is huge. Uh, so let's continue to claim sea tiles because they're very valuable. And then we'll build a, another city right there. Because now is the time to start building those cities. And boom, next turn. I'm fully expecting to start getting pressured by armies. And here's the first army to pressure me. It's a little boat. He is pressuring that tile. Uh, reduce power waste to minus 50%. This is a huge late game tech right here. So if I reduce my power waste all the way to here, it will make buying power cheaper. And that's a big deal uh, because power is the most important late game resource for fighting other players. So that'll be something we get to work on probably after we start boosting up our cities. Um, and speaking of cities, maybe it's time we started building them all. So I could build two grassland cities or a forest city and two mountain cities. Now, mountain cities are a little bit more expensive, but these are coastal mountain cities. And my, my, my civilization does really well based on its scaling. I could get three coastal cities or two grassland coastals. 35 base cost. I think the two grasslands might actually be better here. I'm going to upgrade this city because that'll allow it to project more power and defend my borders over here. Um, and then I'm going to assign... I'm going to spend science to get more power in the sea. You can see this guy's power level is five and minus four. So I've just upgraded by mine by two. So unless he can upgrade his by another one or two, I should defend this tile now based on the situation. But I'm going to go ahead and buy another C tech. And now you can see we're equal. So this tile should no longer flip, I'm pretty sure. So let's fully invest all of our money into science because now we're going to start making our economy go vertical. So I need to get all of these city yield tax. I should have spent more f uh, more food on cities that turn, actually. That was a mistake, I think. All right, so I think we defended our tile, and the better our defense, the more they're going to spend time attacking each other. Honestly, both of these opportunities are pretty terrible, so I'm not even going to talk about them because they're not really even worth it. Let's take plus one science from cities and just start upgrading based on the cheapest cities to upgrade. Boom, boom, boom. Every time we click one of these, we increase the total population in our empire, which is getting us three science and one money at the cost of one food per turn, which is a fantastic return on investment. I need next turn 250 science, which means I probably don't need to fully invest in here because I'm just generating that much science naturally. Let's invest more in food so we can grow bigger cities. Boom. We do need to start thinking about our win condition. Uh, I'm going to take the hilltop oracle here. So this for 30 money, I'll get between one and 100 science. Boom. I got 35 science, which is actually a pretty bad conversion rate it's fine let's take the plus 20 money per turn and now i need to have 400 science at the end of next turn 
Can I make that happen? I can't, so I'll just save my cash. No, I'll invest it into food. What's the power level looking like over here? It's a six versus a five, so I'm gonna upgrade this city again. I'll also bring that, so now it's a six versus a six, and I will continue to upgrade cities based on who's the cheapest. Boom, see how she goes next turn. Yeah, okay, so he backed off the border. I'll talk a little bit more about border expansion when I actually decide to build a military. For now, I'm focused on just building an overwhelming economy to destroy my enemies. Uh, own more armies and cities. Both of these are pretty terrible opportunities, it's fine. Let's take a look at the situation. I am about to hit the pyramids, um, so I will get two crowns from that. I can easily hit Colossus, so that'll be three crowns in total. Power technology should be fairly simple, so that'll be four crowns in total. And then I would just need to achieve one of these three crowns, and it'll probably be wealth. So that's what we're going to do. That's going to be how we try to win the game. Um, let's go ahead and recruit population in the cheap places. Boom. There we go. City population complete. Now we need to work on power technologies. However, we will work on power technologies after we have the money per city yields because 25 yield is really good. So now we're talking about win conditions. I might actually be able to pull off a pacifist victory here uh, if I'm very careful. So I don't need food anymore except for to defend myself. Mostly I need power techs. So that's what I should probably focus on. I need power techs and armies. I'm going to start recruiting armies, I think. Yeah, let's recruit a navy. I'm going to keep it in this city right here. Then I will recruit an army in the Sahara. I'll keep it right here. This is mostly defensive. I'm mostly building these to fulfill this mission. I don't actually want to go and fight anyone. Conquer an island space. Both of these are terrible. I, none of these really suit my build. I'm not in a position to conquer, and I, there's no way if I can't conquer, I can't own the most grassland, right? So pretty simple rejection on both of those. We will upgrade. Now we get another 25 cash per turn. Let's recruit another navy. I'll recruit it over here in this city right there. I need two more armies to fulfill this. And now I just need to start pumping power tax. So every time you, this is a power tech. Basically what it does, uh, this, this column here, is it just increases your defense and offense in the terrain type. So if I buy power tech for C, that means when I'm attacking or defending with armies or navies in the C, I will have uh, extra power. So how do I demonstrate this? If I click on this boat and I move it to here, you can see I have plus three attack from techs, right? Plus one from the unit, because you always have one power. But if I were to invest more into military, right? If I invested more into military, I would have two, three power next turn. And so that the uh the plus one from unit would be plus three from unit but i don't actually want to do this so i'm going to undo this turn and reject both and uh, just redo it because what i really want is to save money to buy armies that's what i need to do i need to buy armies and navies and be ready for that the only thing i can do with my food is i guess i can technically expand my border but i should really just be expanding my cities for defensive and economic reasons yeah look these guys are all fighting each other and they don't know that i have a win condition rightio so i need two more armies or fleets i probably just need to have one army this game i'm going to get a fleet in this city so that it adds its power to this uh, area and then i should be able to buy an army next turn fleet okay technologically i'm going to go ahead and buy power in the sea and i need to buy 12 power techs and i've got four out of 12. so i'm probably going to just start buying some cheap ones every time you buy a power tech all other power techs get more expensive that's something you need to consider but if you spread really, really wide, it could be fairly cheap. And we're also going to continue to grow cities, mainly for defensive reasons. Remember, the bigger your city is, the more it projects defensive power. I don't need horse archers, so I will... I'll take horse archers because I don't need the battering ram, basically, is what I'll do. Um, let's go ahead and just keep taking cheap power techs across every category. We're now up to 11 power techs. We will get our final fleet. Boom. Which means we're now up to three out of seven crowns. All we have to do is get one more power tech and 800 wealth. And we've won the game. So let's start making it cheaper to hold wealth in reserve. Boom. And continue to grow cities for defensive purposes. Uh, but I think that's all she wrote here. I think we're, we're, on the, we're on the victory lap. We just need to save money. Let's go. Let's go ahead and reject both of these. Uh, we will have 300 money next turn. We need one more power tech. I guess I'll save up for C. I'm going to buy this to reduce my wealth waste so that we only lose a very small amount. And then I'm going to keep just growing cities for the purpose of increasing my income a little bit. Uh, but I think mostly I just need to mash end turn here and I win. All right, there's my final power tech. We're up to four crowns. Bada bing, bada boom. 
uh, reject both of these. Then we just use our science to max out what little bit of cash we're getting from our tiles. May as well grab a little bit of resources. So nobody's trying to invade me yet because they see each other as easier targets. Um, but that does not preclude me from potentially being a target. Two more, two more end turns and I think we win the game pretty handily here. Yeah, a lot of armies getting shifted around and doing all sorts of crazy stuff. And uh, we hit the end turn button and that should be all she wrote. We've got 800 money in the bank. Nobody can steal our tiles. We created an unassailable empire in here. Didn't really actually get to show you off the military stuff, but you could probably garner that it's all about moving troops to the border of your enemies and trying to outpower them and push them back. Uh, but there you go. We won with the Egyptians. Ozymandias, guys. Uh, new DLC map releasing today when the video drops. Links in the description. Check it out. It's a fun little game. You can play it in an hour. It took me 53 minutes with commentary to get through this game. Uh, with friends, it probably takes like an hour and a half. Super fun game if you're doing like a land night, if you're doing like a party night, if you're hanging out with your friends. If you guys want to play something like Civ that doesn't take a whole decade, um, like six, six hours to play through. Super, super fun game. And uh, I'm really glad I was able to win a pacifist victory. I love you all very much and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.